Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here and the secret history living in your aquarium. So this is uh, at the moment my favorite tank. Uh, we've got specifically Southeast Asian to Micronesian fish, Polynesian fish here. Uh, we've got the Radnocentris ornatus, which are the, the silver ones. The females have kind of a blue shimmer, whereas the males have a red uh, finage and they still have kind of a blue shimmer on their body but they've got a red finage and their uh, their belly will turn red oftentimes when they're in spawning mode and then they'll get a black line on their uh the fins kind of on the edges of their fins basically then these other fish here that right now you can see the males have the big tail that's uh kind of a leer tail liar tail um and it's it's got the little curves on it but then they also have a really extended uh dorsal fin and look at that right there beautiful so they've actually got an adipus fin uh that is super long as streamers i, I believe and then they've got their dorsal fin that they can actually put up and use for uh, fighting or getting the attention of females or whatnot, but these guys are so happy right now because they've been put into water There they go the two males if you have two males, they'll do this They'll show off and they'll spin around in a circle uh, oftentimes during feeding or during spawning and uh, They'll they'll color up also with some stripes on their side So they're a really fun species all these species, you're seeing the full-grown size. So the biggest fish is the the, the Radnocentris ornatus here, which uh, is a very unusual fish to find in the U.S. hobby. But they're kind of a mid-size to still smaller size um, rainbow fish. They they'll stay uh, this size here. This is an adult, and he's probably two and a half inches, I would guess. And then the uh, the uh, beautiful thread fins here are also full grown at the moment and they're probably 1.75 inches or 8 to 10 centimeters full grown something like that uh, they can get a little over 2 inches so they're also not in the like nano fish category but close and then we've also got the pseudomagill luminatus up here which is also this is full grown and they've just got a beautiful yellow display you could also choose another blue eye pseudomagill like uh i mean you could it, you could all these can live in slightly brackish water for one but you could pick um something like uh the furcata species of pseudomagill instead which uh is kind of the fork tail one with the yellow fins not quite so much yellow or orange on the body and uh, you could also pick, I mean, you could pick a, a number of them. Uh, you could also pick the Ivanstovs, or you could pick the, uh, I think they're called Krulensis uh, ones. And, um, man, look at how those, just beautiful how they display. And, and, I mean, they're unassuming. When you see these, when you unpack them from an order or at the store, uh, they usually aren't, they don't have that deep olive to black color on their, uh, finage, and they, they don't have any color tones in their body, they just look silver, and these are anything but just plain, and here we can see our next little species we're going to talk about, which is the Indonesian freshwater, uh, goby, and this is the bumblebee goby, hold on, I know I'm shaking, sorry guys, um, but they're really a fun little fish. Um, they like really fresh water, all these fish. You know, they like moving water, streams, and they, they also like a low TDS. That's kind of key. They do like eating live fish or, or, or fry, uh, you know, brine shrimp, or they'll eat little teeny fry. They'll eat anything that fits in their mouth. But with the thread fins, thread fins have a very small mouth. If you look closely, I mean, their mouth only opens about as big as their eyeball. And so they're really limited in that way. But the uh, Radnocentris, I mean, relatively speaking, they have a small mouth too, but they can eat a little bit bigger things. They could eat, say, 
probably this shrimp. You know, the way fish suck food in with a little vortex uh, and a kind of, a, I don't know, a siphon motion the, when they start their, open their mouth and it creates a void. Uh, they kind of can just suck in anything that would fit. Uh, so <clears throat> there's a chance that the baby shrimp in here, which are uh, Zengogensis or Davidi, and they're ne Neocaridina. Uh, so they're just normal cherry shrimp, essentially, uh, and found from Taiwan to mainland China, Indonesia. You can find them kind of all over Southeast Asia, different forms of them. So they're in here too. Uh, I actually thought that some of them might get picked off sooner, but they haven't. And this guy is so small. I mean, we're talking very small compared to my hand here. He's full grown also. And the males are gonna be a little broader and have more of a kind of a bulldog face on them with the big jowls, whereas the female, and a little more yellow to them, whereas the females tend to be more of a light olive color. They don't usually display quite as big um, with their uh, fins and their, their big jowls, like with that big front facing uh, kind of impressive lionfish looking profile or, or uh, portrait, I guess it would be not profile. Um, so great fish and you know if you have more of the pseudomagills right now i'm waiting on getting some more of these he's my last one at the moment um i mean just another great fish too uh that will do the same thing as these thread fins the males are just so uh flamboyant in in these species they will go around in circles and i always liken it to west side story where they they tape their or or the michael jackson music video for bad where they tape their hands together and get in a knife fight and they're kind of twirling around trying to avoid each other and they kind of like take little jabs at one another but rarely do they actually hurt one another the more common injury you'll see or health issue you'll see on these fish and this is why you need at least a 20 long i mean ideally i'll probably put these guys in a 40 because i'm liking how all this is going i think i'm going to move them to a 40 with a very similar layout as this scape actually i'm really enjoying this kind of hill stream slash uh you know jungle river subtropical river kind of thing mountain stream in the in the tropics feel um and the thing that they'll do to hurt themselves is they'll run full speed chasing one another or avoiding one another and they will smash their nose so they'll get a little white dot on their nose or lip where they've smashed into something uh, and that's a pretty common injury we will see that sometimes in all rainbow fish uh, but you know you want to make sure it's not velvet or you know cotton mouth or any of those things like that uh, but once you're sure of it uh, you'll just get to know your fish and whether they're the <laughs> the personality that does that because it, it really does depend on the the individual fish uh sometimes you'll just get an alpha male that just is berserk and just rams into everything um so the other thing on that note is you want to at least leave two inches if not more of water from the top so that they they don't jump out as easily now they can jump out at least six inches straight up and with another foot or so that they'll easily clear um in in horizontal distance so it, it's pretty hard to stop them without putting an actual lid on the tank um and i just don't like lids on my tanks so uh this does discourage them quite a bit i mean they have to get a running start and jump here to make it out here and know they're heading towards a wall so it definitely helps like i've got a pump on the back i've got things that kind of define their edges that rock in the corner the heater can go in this corner it's usually tilted at more of an angle like such um but yeah so that's i mean they'll, they'll do good in a planted tank but they definitely do want some room to roam and uh you know oddly enough is these fish got used to the filter being on the other side uh the the than it is right now and so they started swimming against the current like they are oriented as they are right now but now that I've moved the filter, they're still mostly swimming that same direction. And so I'm curious to see if it'll change because they immediately went from not having an orientation of which way they were headed to uh, heading 
the the way they seem to mostly be going now uh, and it's only been a day but i'm just kind of interested to see if that's a habit or you know if it, if it's something about this being south facing and the light that comes in in the morning and and midday so we'll see but uh right now the water has a pretty low tds the temperature's around 77 or 78 degrees these fish can all handle a little bit hotter than that uh, they can also handle a little bit of salinity and a little bit if the TDS is just calcium and salinity, they'll be okay, but they don't really like hard water per se. Uh, they like a lower TDS and I mean, they can take slightly acidic water with some leaves in it or, you know, almond leaves or something like that, or they can take, uh, you know, slightly, if it's been from limestone or something that the water's been washing over, if you have a couple pieces of limestone or siltstone in there, uh, that'll usually be okay. Or if your tap water's slightly, um, just slightly a little bit um, alkaline, that should be fine. Uh, and then as far as reproduction goes, that's what this moss is in here for. And it's actually just an old filter that I pulled off from another tank that, that grew moss prolifically on the the intake of the filter uh, and so in the mornings generally these fish uh, when the lights come on or when the sun comes up whatever happens first these fish will lay a few eggs every day on a surface that's sticky so um, or their eggs are sticky so I should say a surface so they, they may pick here they in theory could pick the glass they i i rarely see that it's usually they're going to lay it on some sort of floating you could use a yarn mop or you could use uh, i've seen even plastic bags used um, at breeding facilities and things like that but i mean a plant with fine uh foliage is is probably the best way to, to go as far as they'll be able to kind of hide it in there, uh, hide the eggs. And the, the thing is, they will eat their own eggs, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But if they can't see them, they're less likely to eat them. Go figure. Actually, you can see some eggs stuck right there. Uh, and those eggs have rotted, have turned rotten. You can see that they are no longer a clear color, and they're now milky. That's usually a pretty good sign that they've molded over and have fungi. They'll usually be clear to off yellowish um, colored if they're not. But all these guys kind of do the same with their, their uh, reproduction and uh, you know, the females and males will do a courtship kind of every day and uh, the males will then kind of size up for who's the boss. And so it's a, it's a really fun fish to watch. And as they eat, as they display their colors, you really get to see uh, some interesting variation in all of that uh they, they change colors throughout the day so this guy could be this color now and he could be burgundy up top later in the day and then he could have um they have a line halfway down their body when they get fully mature about a year old so he's fully grown but they still take on different colors as they age so there's just a lot of um a lot of kind of neat behavior and and different changes that go on it makes for a very dynamic tank so i highly recommend these smaller rainbow fish i mean you can also use uh the praycox rainbow uh or neon dwarf rainbows uh all the pseudomagills that are either fresh water or if you're doing brackish i guess you can do brackish water and then these radnocentris are another good one um they are a little bigger, as I said. Like, we probably don't want all eight of these to grow out in a 20 long, but they'll be okay for now while the others are still growing. The females only get as big as this one here. She's full grown. So, um, you know, this guy's got room to grow into that, and so it's gonna take up a lot more uh, of the ammonia capacity. Now, right now, we also have two of the plecos in here, and that's just uh, because they're they're cleaning up the, the glass for me. Uh, not so much even of algae per se, but just bubbles and things because it's a brand new tank. So uh, hopefully they're happy in here also. They've kind of got similar parameters, but from the other side of the world. They throw everything off, so if I can get a rhino gobius or, uh, you know, uh, some sort of gara, like a pandagara or rufagara, I'll probably swap them out so that we have a true kind of biotope of Indonesian fish or Borne Borneo um fish from Borneo kind of thing. And then uh, all these fish are kind of found 
in between northern Australia up to Papua New Guinea and, and over into the islands of the Aru Islands and uh, the, over towards the Malacca Strait or Strait of Malacca and Indonesia. So um, that is uh, kind of a cool area and with all the little islands there's a lot of diversity and 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 that's where you start to run into also i mean we could have included um some of the uh some of the really neat looking gobies like up here the stiphodon species these guys all live out in those islands too and every island has kind of a unique species we've got some neon gold ones there uh the one with the you can see is gold fins and then we've got a palawan uh which is far more remote than the other islands uh, I was just discussing. Riffle goby here, uh, and they will not reproduce in fresh water. They need uh, salt water. But again, it, it makes for a really dynamic tank. And if you're keeping the water nice and clean and you've got lots of plants and good flow in it, um, these guys could easily be added to that uh, to, to make it a fun fun and interesting tank where these guys kind of cling to the lower surfaces and the rainbow fish kind of uh, take the top water and mid water most of the day. When they feed, they kind of go a little bit lower sometimes. And that's the last note is when you're feeding them, make sure that you get some foods that is, stay suspended up on the top and then that kind of slowly sink because a lot of them won't eat off the bottom much. Uh, it, it's kind of a rarity for them to pick off the bottom. They, they want to eat food as it's falling or moving in the water. So live food is always best. Frozen food, pretty much second. And then, uh, you know, dried food after that. You can feed them flakes. It's just they're, they're a lot easier to fatten up and get ready for spawning and uh, produce a lot more fish. And the babies will grow much, much faster uh, if, if you have that live food ready for them. Babies kind of need it, in fact. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this kind of overview of the new little uh, stream aquascape. I'll probably put the driftwood back in here if you guys saw that. The first tank that was a 20 long sitting here actually burst a seam, and I was worried that it happened again because we've got some water back here, but luckily it didn't. What happened was uh, the filter started to overflow when it got clogged by some of the silt of the sand being new to the tank. So in any case, we'll talk about that in another episode, but have a great day. Take it easy and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't and you made it this far. What are you doing? Come on. It's free entertainment, free knowledge. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Take it easy. Bye.